So you don't want to have blueprints when you print cyanotypes. Okay, let's have a look at how we can tone. Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what we're gonna be looking at is cyanotype toning. Because although cyanotypes are fantastic and that they give this lovely blue print, which in some cases can be absolutely lovely, now we may want to be able to change that color and that is where toning comes in. Now, cyanotype is a really nice, accessible, process. We coat the paper, we expose the object or negative to UV sunlight for about 10 minutes and then we have this lovely print. We give it a wash and we've got this lovely blue print in front of us. But what happens if we don't want a blue print? We want a black and white or a brown print, shall we say. That's where we can start looking at toning. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the process, which is the same for each of the toning solutions I'm going to be using. But we're going to look at using just everyday tea as a toner, some instant coffee as well, but also some wine tannin. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button in the bottom right. And also stick around to the end of the video for a lovely voucher that I have given you 15% off all our amazing papers here at Photospeed on photospeed.com. Also for all the US viewers out there, please don't forget that we have a flat rate shipping fee now of $9 to the US. So well worth having a look on our website and taking advantage of that. I do have to say you will be liable for any taxes and import duties and things within your own state. So please bear that in mind. Okay. So let's dive in to cyanotype toning. Okay, so we've decided that we want to print cyanotypes because it's a lovely, easy process. But we're thinking, actually, I might want to just tone the print. So I've kind of got a kind of a purple print or a, uh, a brown print or a black kind of print as well. So we can really darken down and make those shadow details and those thicker parts of the print a black color. So this is where toning can come in. Now we can do this in loads of different ways really. The most common probably toner that you'll see out there is tea. Just everyday normal tea. We put a tea bags in some water and then we leave it to stew for a little bit and pour it over the print in a tray and then you know, over a few hours, the print gets toned. Now how it works is we need to bleach the print back to start with, and that softens the emulsion and the cyanotype sensitizer that's already on the page. And we don't bleach it right back, we just bleach it for a few seconds, probably five to 10 seconds. Now we bleach it in a solution of sodium carbide, which effectively is soda crystals that we use for washing and things. So that's what I use. I use a couple of teaspoons of soda crystals in a liter of water, in a tray, put the print in, leave it for about five to 10 seconds and then whip it out and wash it. Now, what happens is it just turns a little bit of a purple color in the highlights. So that would be perfect. Then what we do is we wash the print and then we pop it into our toning solution, be it tea, wine tannin or coffee. And then we leave it for a good few hours. Some of the prints I leave overnight to really get that dark, rich brown and those really deep blacks in there. So what happens is once we've bleached the print, then we softened up that emulsion and then we can start to kind of attack the emulsion almost and put it into tea. Now the tannin in tea starts to cling to the iron in the cyanotype solution. So then what happens is from a blue, it gradually changes to a brown and a black over time. Now we can have like split toning as well. So if you pull it out of the solution a little bit earlier, you'll get a blue kind of browny look in this split toning. The highlights go a little bit sooner than the shadow detail as well. So you can have blue shadow detail and kind of an off brown kind of highlights in there as well. So we can have these lovely effects in there. But 
I would say it is a little bit of a hit and miss process sometimes. It takes a lot of an experimentation to kind of get it right, especially the bleaching process. You'll need to put it in there and bleach. I found when I started, I, what I did was I got one print and just cut it into strips and practiced bleaching because if you go too far, the print actually won't come back. So you won't see what's on the page. It'll just be kind of this shadow of what used to be there. And if you don't go far enough, the um, tannin won't stick to the iron in the cyanotype sensitizer. So you'll still have a blue print. So it is a little bit of a fickle process, but once you get it, it is very, very nice as well. Another thing we have to be aware of, we are gonna get a little bit of staining on the paper as well. Now, coffee and tea, they tend to stain the paper quite a bit, whereas the wine tannin doesn't stain it as much. It still is a little bit of staining in there. So, something to be aware of, but when I go through the process in a little bit, then you will see the advantages and disadvantages of each process. And I've got some lovely prints as well we can have a look at and see. Okay. So let's have a look at actually how we do this process and actually how we start. Because it's a nice, easy process. You can do it in normal light. We don't need a dark room or anything to do it. Once we've made the cyanotypes, then you pretty much can do it in your kitchen or on, your, on a table, on your desk. Then we just need a couple of trays set up and then we can go through and tone some cyanotypes. Okay, so let's start with the bleaching process. So the tricky question we always get asked with the bleaching process is how much do I bleach? Well, we want to put the print in our like soda crystal solution and don't use bicarbonate of soda either because it won't work in the same way and it could create some horrible kind of effects on your print. It has to be soda crystals mixed up. So once the print is in there, we just want to look at it and you just want to snatch it out of the bleach just as it starts to turn a little bit of a purple in the highlights and then we can wash it off and fight. You may look and see the shadows are still quite dense and quite blue. Don't worry about that. What we don't want to do is lose any of those highlights. So if it starts to turn purple within a matter of seconds, then your solution is a little bit too strong. Like I said, probably one to two teaspoons of soda crystals in about a liter of water is round about what I use and seems to be a good kind of level. We don't want to be rushing to get it out within seconds because when we pull it out it will carry on bleaching because that solution soaks into the paper so we've got to wash it really quickly as well. The best way I found was to get little strips and just to test this and practice. I went way too far on my first one and then didn't go far enough on my second one and then third one and fourth one, I kind of got it right. But it takes practice. Experiment, have a play with it. And if you've got strips, you can just pop them all in a solution of tea after once you've bleached them all and see which one bleaches the best and which one kind of tones the best for you. That's the best way. I think with this process, experimentation is key. My way will work great for me. It might not work as well for you because of different water and things like that. There's quite a few variables in this process. So have an experiment, see which work works best for you. That's the best way. However, once we've bleached and we've got it all ready, we can actually start doing the fun bit, which is the toning. Now it's quite actually a hands-off process, this. So the first, toning solution I'm going to look at is tea. Now I start by brewing a liter of tea and I am usually put five to six tea bags in a liter of boiling water, leave it for about 10-15 minutes, stir it and then squeeze out the tea bags and take it out. Then let it cool down a little bit. We don't want to put boiling hot tea on top of our print because it will cause all kinds of problems. So once it's brewed we put the print, which is still wet from the washing process, that's really important to pre-wet your print as well, because it just speeds things along a little bit. And then we basically just pour the tea on top, and then we leave it. And we can leave it for anywhere between at least three hours, and then anywhere after that. I mean, I've left prints for 10 hours before, I've left them overnight, 
um, and keep agitating as well. Keep checking it. Don't just leave it, but check it every couple of hours just to see what's going on. Give it a bit of a shake as well. Tip the tray up, backwards and forwards, just to agitate it a little bit. Get the tannin working in a different area as well. Now, the one problem I find with tea is it does stain the paper quite a bit. So, something to bear in mind if you want some clean highlights in there you're probably not going to get it they're going to look a little bit muddy and a little bit brown when we're looking at it so it's something to bear in mind the best tea i've found actually is the value tea you get in the supermarket that seems to be the best and the most cost effective but also black tea and green tea are really good herbal teas will not work because they haven't got enough tannin in you need that high concentration of tannin so black tea green tea or just that value everyday kind of tea will work great earl grey doesn't work too well either because it's got a lot of oil in and it it can affect how the print looks and things. So stay away from that one. But basically, yeah, the, the value tees are the best. That's what I'm using. So yeah, works good. Okay, so let's look at coffee. Pretty much it's the same process. So we bleach it in the same way and we make a coffee solution. Now I normally make a really strong instant coffee uh, in a liter of water. So I'm probably putting four tablespoons of coffee into a liter of water so works great it's exactly the same way as the tea brew it let it stand for a little bit we, we don't want to be putting hot boiling water over our print so let it cool down a little bit or add a little bit of cold to it once it's brewed then we will put this over our print and again we'll leave it for at least three, four hours, maybe even longer, maybe eight hours, and it will just change over time. The advantage of coffee is it creates a beautiful kind of brown in there. Doesn't produce as deep a black as tea. However, if you leave it longer, you can achieve a deeper black as well, which is good. Um, also, I found it doesn't kind of stain the paper as much as tea does but it doesn't tone as much either. We haven't, it kind of, it creates this beautiful brown, but if we're looking for those kind of dark blacks and things, maybe tea is slightly better, but you could leave it a little bit more in there as well. So tea and coffee are fairly similar. Coffee just doesn't stain the paper as much, but we don't get a deeper black with the coffee which I was surprised about actually when I was testing them and things. I thought that the coffee would probably give me a deeper black, um, but it's to do with the tanning content. Now, that brings me nicely onto my third kind of process and my third material to use for cyanotype toning, which is wine tanning. Now, I buy it in powder form. You can buy it in kind of this gloopy, kind of syrupy, kind of consistency what I found with that is it is really hard to dissolve in water and kind of gets really sticky and horrible so the best thing I found is just buy a little tub of wine tannin so buy it in powder form as well now I put probably two teaspoons of this powder to a liter of water mix it up mix it really well because you can get that kind of syrupy kind of gloopiness happening as well so do it perhaps do it gradually just mix it up and mix it up and mix it up in boiling water then leave it to kind of cool down a bit now what i found with wine tanning though is because it's got that tanning content quite a quite high content of tannin in it gives you Quite, quite quick results. So two to three, four hours will probably tone your print for you and do it really nicely as well. It doesn't stain the paper as much either. So that is a big sign. Also, it gives this lovely kind of sheen, this kind of almost purpley kind of tone to the brains as well. Um, but it gives you a really nice deep black as well. But also because it doesn't stain the paper too much, it stains it a little bit. It's not a pure white, but when compared to tea and things, so your highlights are really gonna stand out as well. So it will give you that lovely look and that lovely bright highlight in there as well, which is fantastic, it was what we want. We won't use any detail in the highlights because we've got our bleaching process correct, but it will give us a lovely 
kind of punch to the picture. So wine tannin is my favorite material to use for tanning, toning. However, it is quite expensive. I think a little tub of it is about six pounds. So when you compare it to the value tea bags and things, it is, yeah, very expensive. So tea is probably the most accessible and probably the cheapest. With all these processes, what we need to do is once we've toned the print, we need to really give it a good wash as well, because that will actually whiten up those highlights as well and flash out any kind of um, toning, toning solution still in the print. Now, the paper I've used is the Platinum Rag from Harlemuller, which is a fantastic paper and an amazing paper for all alternate processes. I'll put a link below in the description to the paper on our website. Absolutely fantastic. Works for toning cyanotypes really, really well as well. Works fantastically. So once we've given it a good wash, we leave it to dry and then we can actually have a look at the prints and see what we've got. And it's amazing. We've gone from a lovely blue to this kind of rich brown with kind of a dark black in there. They could also be compared to Van Dyke brown prints or Ajara type prints. However, I found with the Ajara type prints that um, I did a video on a couple of weeks ago that we don't get that really deep black that we do when we are toning cyanotypes. Um, so that is something that it had the advantage over it, but it is a long process. So you are gonna be sitting around for a day or overnight. Best thing to do, do them in the evening, leave them sat in the tray overnight and then you come back and they're all lovely and toned for you. That's probably the best thing to do when you wake up in the morning. So I hope that's been useful and hopefully it's given you something to try. And if you've got these lovely cyanotypes about and you're thinking, but the problem is they're blue, then Tone them, get some tea on the go, pop some in a tray, put your prints in and then tone and see what you think. But please experiment. I've given you some basics and some kind of uh, things to kind of play around with, kind of the, over the basics, should we say, but it is gonna take a little bit of experimentation to kind of get things right for yourselves and to find the right process for you. But please send some pictures out. I'd love to see some pictures and things as well. You know, at the start of the video, I did promise a photo speed voucher for 15% off photo speed papers. Now this is FS YouTube 15, and it will give you 15% off photo speed papers on photospeed.com. And also for all the US viewers out there, please don't forget that flat rate shipping fee of $9. Um, you will be liable for any taxes and import duties within the US and your own state. So please bear that in mind when ordering. So, cyanotype toning. I hope now that gives you an overview of how to do it and what materials and things best to try. And until next time, bye bye.